Michiru Kagimori lives in a world where humans coexist with a species known as Beastmen. But things change when Michiru unexpectedly transformed into a tanuki, meaning a raccoon dog but humanoid. I know, it's weird, so she attempts to find safety in Anima City, a refuge created for beastmen, and one day runs into Shiro Ogami, a wolf beastman who works for the mayor of the city. The two try to find out what caused Michiru's transformation while maintaining the peace in Anima City. But they end up becoming caught up in a plot involving Silvasta Pharmaceuticals and prestigious medical research facility. The duo is forced to put an end to their antics after learning and failing to ignore the dishonest and illegal business practices of this company. Having uncovered these dark secrets, what do Michiru and her new comrade have in store for them in Anima City? Welcome back to Anime Sereo. Shouts out to all the anime heads out there. Today we're gonna try something different. Listen closely and stick around till the end to participate in a fun little competition among us. More on that at the end of the video, and now let's get to the show. The story begins in a world inhabited by both humans and beastmen alike. This is a world where a tanuki, Michiru Kagemori, resides. As she is using a nearby ATM, a group of hoodlums appear and begin to vandalize a poster promoting kindness and unity between the races. Seeing this, Michiru just hides inside an air vent and makes her way out when the thugs have departed. Consequently, she then makes her way to a bus station and promptly jumps on a bus departing on Route 66. It is revealed that this bus's final destination will be a place called Anima City, a town dedicated to the beastman species. As she cozies up for her travel, all of a sudden, a gang of beast hunters arrive out of nowhere and manage to knock Michiru off the bus. Understanding the current situation, she tries to evade any more incoming attacks and tries to run away, but alas, as she is fleeing on top of a rail, she ends up slipping and falling into a deep hole. Nevertheless, the gang doesn't give up chasing her and is able to find her eventually. They begin beating the living daylight out of her. Just as her life flashes before her eyes, she is saved by Marie Itami, who claims she has to keep Michiru safe as per her client's orders. Regardless, the gang doesn't back down, resulting in Marie and her lackeys transforming and kicking their asses. Not only that, she also states that she can protect Michiru the rest of the way to Anima in exchange for some cash. And so, the group finally reaches their destination. Once there, they learn that the town is currently undergoing tier 10th year anniversary. The crowd begins to grow uneasy in order to see what's up, and amidst the chaos, Michiru gets her wallet stolen. Nonetheless, she decides to track down this petty thief, but this is seen to be a bad idea. Because while she is doing so, she gets involved in a bombing. Michiru gets rescued by Shiro Ogami, a wolf beast. Although he suspects Michiru at first for this explosion, he soon learns that this bomb was planted by a group of paid mercenaries sent by anti-beastmen humans in order to ruin the festivities. As such, Shiro runs after the perpetrators and begins pounding them bloody. Despite their foes having weapons and guns, Shiro completely overpowers them and moves in for the last blow when he is suddenly stopped by Michiru. Of course, Shiro is not stopped by a few mere words, leading Michiru to use force. However, seeing the hatred Shiro holds for humans, she is forced to reveal that she too used to be a human in the past, leaving him flabbergasted. Although she insists that her statement is true, Shiro refuses to believe her. He claims that her appearance is enough evidence for him that the girl standing before him is for sure a beastman. Nevertheless, the cops soon arrive and de-escalate the situation. They get kind of mad that Shiro arrived to deal with the situation before them. Not only that, after the battle, while everyone reverts to their human forms, Michiru is seen to be having some trouble and fails to do so. Anyway, Shiro takes her to get her claims tested, but the test only confirms that she is a beastman but she still announces herself as human, stating that until last year, she was a normal person. To prove her word, she pulls out her ID card, only to realize that she is yet to find the thief. However, as luck would have it, after spending the night, she heads into the city once again, thinking that she might be able to find her possession. As such, Shiro drops her off where she wants and then leaves. With a twist of luck, she soon happens upon the wallet thief. Of course, he tries to deny any involvement. Nevertheless, Marie intervenes, allowing the thief to run off. In addition, Marie also claims that they will have to go to Rabbit Town and meet with Graham Grandma in order for her to get her wallet back. And so they do just that. Once there, they meet with Graham Grandma, who wants Michiru to teach the orphans here in exchange for retrieving her stolen property. But this facility has a dark side. Under the table, Kusakabe, a high-ranking gang member, has been demanding the orphans. 
Grandma is unable to pay off her debts, and as a result, her debt collector has decided that he will take away the orphans in exchange for the money. However, Shiro and Michiru learn of this, deciding to help the children escape. While helping them, Michiru is also able to change the size of her arms, growing more powerful. Eventually, with Shiro's help, they are all able to overcome the dangers and put Grandma under arrest. Not only that, but she is also finally able to prove her claims after getting back her wallet and seeing the cruel and unforgiving Beastman world, she promises to cure herself from this disease she calls Beastmanitis. The next morning, while inspecting Michiru's ID card, Shiro gets flashbacks of her past where he learns about Nazuna, Michiru's best friend who suddenly transformed into a Beastman one day. And that's not all, after her friend was dragged away, she too then transformed. Back in the present, Michiru learns of the Silvasta Pharmaceutical Company where she hopes she might be able to get a cure for her illness. There, they meet with the mayor of the town, Rose. She reveals that recently, a bombing took place and destroyed Silvasta's products. In addition, she brings forth a letter, telling Silvasta to use the money-saving beastmen into saving humans instead. However, the police are unable to find the culprit, prompting Rose to ask Shiro to help. There, Michiru also asks for Rose's help in resolving her situation. And so, the duo are stuck with the stakeout. While they wait for their moment, Shiro explains that Silvasta has been profiting off of Beastman data. Anyway, he manages to sniff out all the locations of the bombs and hence can stop a gang from forcing their way into the center. All of a sudden, another explosion is heard in the distance. Hearing this, Shiro theorizes that the doctors must be fighting to wipe out any and all evidence of their involvement. There, while Michiru tries to help out, she gets caught up in the killer's arms. Regardless, Shiro is able to save her once again. Nevertheless, Michiru is still unable to revert back to human when she is interrupted by a call from the city council. As a result, she heads over and is handed her beastman credentials and insurance as a token of gratitude for her help in yesterday's incident. In addition, she also buys a sim from Marie, which can help her break free from the Anima City restrictions. Later that day, Michiru is using her socials when she happens upon a live stream. Apparently, a girl sitting right across her is the one recording, and so she goes to stop the girl. However, as soon as she does so, she is attacked and falls unconscious. And the next time she opens her eyes, she is constrained in an unfamiliar place. This is the house of the girl she tried to confront, introduced as Nina Flip, a Beastman girl. Upon learning that Michiru recognized her from social media, Nina changes her threatening aura and takes up a friendly demeanor. Soon, the duo befriend each other and Michiru is later set free. And so, Nina gives Michiru a tour. There, by a miracle, Michiru is able to subtly revert back to her human form. Consequently, Nina invites her to accompany her to a party set up by a girl named Lisa on the mainland, and she agrees to join her. However, Nina accidentally outs herself as a beast folk at the party. Regardless, the others don't seem to mind. In fact, they seem to be encouraging the unity of both species instead and cheer her on. But soon, disaster strikes. When Michiru has gone to the washroom, Lisa puts Nina inside a fish tank, thinking she could relax better there because she is a Delphine beastman. Now stuck, she is about to die from suffocation, but Michiru decides to use her beast powers to save her. With this, the duo decides to return back to Naima City and depart on their journey, where Nina claims that she has a good experience, despite the near-death incident. In the midst of an exhilarating baseball game, Michiru's extraordinary powers capture the attention of the struggling Bears team, igniting their path to victory with her remarkable pitching skills. Unbeknownst to Michiru, their coach Dante has been embroiled in a perilous world of gambling, deliberately orchestrating the team's defeats for personal gain. However, as Shiro delves into Dante's past, a poignant tale of resilience and discrimination unfolds. Dante, once hailed as the first beastman to play professional baseball, faced relentless bigotry and discrimination from both hecklers and even his own teammates. This turbulent journey ultimately led to his expulsion from the game, leaving behind deep emotional scars and a shattered dream. As fate would have it, the Bears find themselves in the finals, entangled in a match where they are coerced into throwing the game. In a daring twist, Dante's desperate attempt to reclaim the ill-gotten gambling funds inadvertently unravels the scheme, inciting the fury of the crowd. The truth comes crashing down, and the disgraced coach faces the consequences of his actions. Amidst the chaos, Shiro steps forward as a mediator, working diligently to restore integrity to the game and rectify the injustices that have tainted the Bears' journey. At the same time, Michiru emerges as a beacon of the true essence of baseball, embodying the values of fair play, perseverance, and sportsmanship. 
Despite the Bears ultimately succumbing to defeat in the championship, the journey they undertake is not in vain. They experience a profound transformation, learning the significance of integrity, unity, and the unwavering pursuit of one's dream. Inspired by Michiru's unwavering spirit and dedication to the game, Dante undergoes a powerful personal metamorphosis. He renounces his gambling ways, rediscovering his love for baseball, and vows to train the team earnestly for future triumphs. Michiru's path crosses with Nazuna Hiwatashi, her former best friend who is now the leader of the Silver Wolf cult. Nazuna, a beastman with the ability to transform into a white fox, has become a revered figure among the beastmen as they believe in the legend of the Silver Wolf deity, Jinro. Despite their differences, Michiru still cares for Nazuna and seeks a cure for her condition. Desiring to help Nazuna, Michiru arranges a meeting between her and Mayor Rose. However, Nazuna manipulates the situation to secure a settlement for the Silver Wolf cult, prioritizing her own ambitions. This revelation leaves Michiru feeling disheartened and betrayed. In a fit of anger, Michiru decides to severe their friendship, realizing that Nazuna's actions are driven by selfishness and a disregard for genuine connections. Despite their shared history, Michiru understands that she cannot condone Nazuna's exploitative behavior and chooses to distance herself from the situation. With mixed emotions, she must come to terms with the loss of her friend while continuing to navigate the complexities of Anima City and her own journey as a beastman. And on this inspiring note, our recap for today comes to an end. This brilliant show examines the delicate issue of racism in society. As per our fun little competition we promised you in the beginning, if you had to recap this anime in one short sentence, what would it be? Wrong answers only, go! The best and the funniest comment will win, drum roll please, a huge fire emoji from us, and of course the laughs and the admiration of the other commenters, and the chance to determine which anime we will recap next. That'll be all from us. If you enjoyed it, drop us a like and subscribe to Anime Sareo for more awesome anime content like this on your feet. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace!